This video is aimed at exposing a Christian apologist William Lane Craig's misrepresentations of a physicists Stephen Hawking and Leonard Melodinos' meta-ontological view named model-dependent realism, which the two presented in their co-authored bestseller, The Grand Design. I will first have to explain as succinctly as possible Hawking and Melodino's views in order to make what's coming next comprehensible. Hawking and Melodino believe a model should not be considered good or bad depending on how real it is. Instead, they write, quote, A model is a good model if it 1. is elegant. 2. Contains few arbitrary or adjustable elements. 3. Agrees and explains all existing observations. 4. Makes detailed predictions about future observations that can disprove or falsify the model if they're not borne out. End quote. Why would it be hard to establish the reality of a model? because Hawking and Malodino think that as long as two or more models match with observations, we can't tell which one is the more real. They pick, as a real-life example, a goldfish that lives inside of a bowl, views the outside world through curved sides, and hence has a distorted vision of it. They then ponder, quote, how do we know that we have the true undistorted picture of reality? The goldfish picture of reality is different from ours, but can we be sure it is less real? Due to the distortion, a freely moving object that we would observe moving in a straight line would be observed by the goldfish to move along a curved path. Nevertheless, the goldfish could formulate scientific laws from their distorted frame of reference that would always hold true and that would enable them to make predictions about the future motion of objects outside the bowl. Their laws would be more complicated than the laws in our frame, but simplicity is a matter of taste. End quote. A bit later, in the same chapter, they come back to this point and write, quote, According to model-dependent realism, it is pointless to ask whether a model is real, only whether it agrees with observation. When there are two models that agree with observation, like the goldfish picture and ours, then one cannot say that one is more real than another, end quote. Because of this, they provide those other criteria to evaluate models. In the third chapter, the authors, using the logic of model-dependent realism, compare two alternative answers to the question, if the world was created a finite time ago, what happened before that? The first model is that of San Augustine, who inferred that time is a property of the world, that didn't exist before God's creation occurred not a long time ago. A model, by Hawking and Melodino's own words, favored by those who maintain the literal truth of the account given in Genesis. The second model is instead the Big Bang model. They write, quote, the model that explains the most about our present observations, including the historical and the geological evidence, is the best representation we have of the past. The second model can explain the fossil and the radioactive record and the fact that we receive light from galaxies millions of light years from us, and so this model is more useful than the first. Still, neither model can be said to be more real than the other. End quote. Therefore, while Hawking and Melodino think neither Young Earth creationism nor the Big Bang model can be considered a more accurate description of reality than the other is, 
they do not believe they are equally well-constructed models. Now that all of this has been said, let's look at how Craig represented the author's views in his lectures. They call their view model-dependent realism. They explain that models are just different ways of interpreting our sense perceptions. On their view, there is no objective reality out there uh, to which our models of the world more or less accurately correspond. Malodnoff and Hawking are thus, in fact, extreme anti-realists. Anti-realists. They deny that there is any objective way the world is. So, for example, contrasting young earth creationism and the Big Bang Theory, Hawking and Mladenov claim that while the Big Bang Theory is, quote, more useful, nevertheless, neither model can be said to be more real than the other, end quote. Now think of it, now think of it. This great champion of modern cosmology thinks that the Big Bang model is no more real or accurate than the creation of the world 6,000 years ago. Now you can't help wonder, but what sort of argument would justify adopting so radical a view? All that Mladenov and Hawking have to offer is the fact that if we were, uh, say, inhabitants of a virtual reality controlled by alien beings, then there would be no way for us to tell. There would be no way for you to tell that you were in the simulated world, and so you would have no reason to doubt its reality. Well, the trouble with this sort of argument is that that doesn't exclude that there are, in this case, two competing models of the world. One is the alien's model, and one is your model, and one of the models is real, and the other one is illusory, uh, even if you can't tell which is which. So it doesn't really support ontological pluralism at all. There is a reality which is real and another which is purely illusory in an objective way. As you can easily tell, this is quite different from what I previously said. During my reading, I never got the impression that Hawking and the Melodino aim to prove an external objective reality doesn't exist. Indeed, the only basis Craig gave to support his representation of the author's views is this quote, neither model can be said to be more real than the other. In his opinion, this means that of the two models, neither one actually is more real than the other is. Ergo, that there is no external objective reality to which the models abide. As I previously said, I instead believe that with this sentence, Hawking and Melodino are just saying that between the two models, we cannot pick one and say it is more real than the other is. This seems to me as a more likely interpretation, as it is a conclusion that properly follows from the alien and the goldfish analogies unlike Craig's more conflated one that is, by his own words, a complete non-sequitur. Also, at the end of the second chapter and in the third chapter, Hawking and Melodino briefly ponder the question of whether an external objective reality exists. They describe the historical conflict between realists and anti-realists and ultimately they write, quote, model-dependent realism short-circuits all this argument and discussion between the realist and anti-realist school of thought, end quote. They therefore decide to move forward without discussing the issues relevant to the realist-anti-realist debate. Between them, whether there is an external objective reality. Craig had to ignore this content in order to say what he said. 
And so Mladenov and Hawking are thus, in fact, extreme anti-realists. 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 You're lying! The only thing that starts pointing towards what Craig said is when, at some point in Chapter 3, Hawking and Melodino assert that realism has become hard to defend due to recent discoveries in quantum mechanics, with microparticles that don't have a definite position nor a definite velocity unless they are measured by an observer. However, nowhere do they say that there is no external objective macro-reality which is what Craig accused them of claiming. In conclusion, Craig quote mined a sentence with possible double meanings and went for an uncharitable interpretation that ignored the rest of the content of the book. And this is not all. A bit later, during the lectures, Craig said this, Hawking and Mladenov, not content with ontological pluralism, really go off the deep end when they assert, and I quote, there is no model independent test of reality. It follows, it follows that a well-constructed model creates a reality of its own. There is no model independent test of reality. It follows that a well-constructed model creates a reality of its own. Now this is an assertion of ontological relativism which is the view that reality itself is different for persons having different models. So for example, if you're Fred Hoyle, if you're Fred Hoyle, then the universe really has existed eternally in a steady state. But if you're Roger Penrose, then the universe really did begin with a big bang. If you're the ancient physician Galen, blood, really does not circulate through the human body. But if you're William Harvey, who discovered circulation, it really does. Now, such a view seems crazy. It's crazy, and is made only more so by Hawking and Mladenov's claim that the model itself creates its respective reality. And it hardly needs to be said that no such conclusion follows from there being no model independent test of the way that the world is. I think Craig is suggesting that Hawking and Melodino believe an imaginary model literally shapes outer reality. However, just as before, there is another, more charitable interpretation for the quote he used. Earlier in the book, the authors write, quote, when a model is successful at explaining events, we humans tend to attribute to it, or to the elements and concepts that constitute it, the quality of reality, or absolute truth. End quote. I will also give the quote Craig mentioned, adding more context. Quote, According to the idea of a model-dependent realism introduced in Chapter 3, our brains interpret the input from our sensory organs by making a model of the outside world. We form mental concepts of our home, trees, other people, the electricity that flows from wall sockets, atoms, molecules, and other universes. These mental concepts are the only reality we can know there is no model independent test of reality. It follows that a well-constructed model creates a reality of its own, end quote. Therefore, what I believe Hawking and Melodino are inferring is that a well-made model constitutes a valid framework of interaction with the universe that we can refer to as a reality, not that the model one adopts can literally create its respective reality. So, if Craig meant what I think he did, he has likely misrepresented Hawking and Melodino. See you next time.